I have another stove review for you today. This time it is a flat pack rocket stove that I purchased on AliExpress. If you're interested in hearing more about this stove and see it in operation, keep watching. Okay, once again, here's the flat pack rocket stove. And in a minute, I'm going to take it apart and put it back in its case and then reassemble it for you so that you can see how it goes together and how flat it lays when it is unassembled. And uh, then we'll get to making a fire in it, of course. But before we do, there's a few things I wanted to talk about in relation to this stove. So I purchased this on AliExpress myself, and I will provide the link where you can get these on AliExpress, likely on eBay as well, and maybe some of the other uh, distributors from China. But after I ordered the stove, it occurred to me that I had thought I had seen this design somewhere else before. It took me a little bit of looking, and what I searched in order to find it was flat pack rocket stove because essentially that's what it is is a rocket stove that you can collapse down into a, a flat pack uh, i found what i was looking for and i was a little disturbed at first but uh, um, I'll, show, I'll tell you what i mean so this is not an original design out of china this is a close copy a near clone of an american design made by a man by the name of tom mills and he refers to the stove as the rocket king and i'm going to provide a link to tom's youtube channel to his kickstarter page and to any other thing anything else i can find out about it I was not aware that Tom had designed a stove like this, or actually almost identical to this, until after I purchased it. Now, I would dearly love to have one of Tom's stoves for comparison to see uh, what the differences are, if, if there are any differences. I, I know there's a few differences, and when you look it up, you'll see the little flanges that stick out past or cut out on this stove, but they're not on Tom's stove, and of course that's just because it adds to the cost. Might lighten the weight a little bit, but uh, it adds to the cost to cut those out. Uh, I don't know about the quality of the steel. There's nothing on the website that, that talks about the quality of the steel in this stove, and I'm not sure what Tom uses on his stove either. But essentially, it is the same design. Now, before you get upset and say there's another one of those uh, stoves that are American design, American made, that are being ripped off by the Chinese, and there likely is some truth to that even with this stove, you need to know that when Tom first designed this stove and made one out of flat sheet metal at home, um, he offered up the design to, for anybody that wanted to do exactly the same, and he still does to this day. If you want to make a stove and you have the ability and the materials to make the stove, then Tom's design is free for anybody to use. Does that mean that that gives license to somebody to use his design and then make money off it? I don't think it does, but we know what that issue is all about. So Tom, I apologize, I don't have your stove to compare against this one. Maybe someday I'll be able to do that, but right now on Amazon Canada, uh, Tom's stove is selling for well over $200, so it's not likely that I'm going to purchase one for myself. Now of interest, Tom, after Tom made the original design, as, as far as I can tell, it's almost identical in size to this one. He has since made a, a smaller version, and most recently I see that he has made a much larger version. Obviously a stationary backyard type of a thing, of interest anyway. Okay, a couple of questions that I'll be asking and talking about while I put this fire on in the stove. Is it truly a rocket stove? Because there is a number of things that go into making a rocket stove. One thing that it does have right off the top is a tall burn chamber. And that will create the chimney effect. But that's not the, all that goes into a rocket stove. It does have a feed port with a flat plate to allow for longer sticks in it. And an open burn chamber where air, or open fire grate, sorry, where air can come up from underneath. Those also are uh, components of a rocket stove. But for a rocket stove to really earn that name it has to draw air in at high velocity usually most of them will have some kind of an extension tube that allow air to pass under a feed plate and then up through the bottom of the stove this one forgoes that so that's what we're going to see today does this draw like a true rocket stove does i'd be interested and if it does great if not it doesn't mean it's a bad stove don't get me wrong um, as you'll see this thing will still perform uh, the other thing about rocket stoves, and I won't know this for another couple of months yet, is how well they perform in cold weather. My experience with at least one other rocket stove, and I've got a couple more that I'm testing, is that when the weather gets very cold, the chimney loses a lot of the heat out through the sides of it um, as it rises to the top. So, you know, 
that's why the, the, the big proper, I'm going to call them properly designed, but the big rocket stoves are all insulated with some type of material around the chimney area to retain the heat as it rises. Um, stainless steel is not bad at doing that, certainly better than titanium. I guess we'll see. When it comes into cold weather, I'll play with this some more and maybe I'll come back when doing another video or a video update on it. But I think for now, you'll get a good idea of how well this stove works. And then if you're interested, well, you'll have the option. You can either buy it from China on AliExpress or you can check out Tom's site and make a decision for yourself. All right, let's take it apart. I'll put it back together. We'll put it in the fireplace and we'll get a fire going in it and we'll get some lunch on. Okay, here is how the stove arrived to me from China. And uh, I do have some notes on the back there, just the specifications I can use as cheat notes, so I can give you those as I assemble the stove. And of course, all the specifications will be listed in the video description below. Nice case, uh, reasonably nice case. I mean, nothing extravagant, but, you know, a little bit of rubberized on the inside. Not that's necessary, of course. I'll pull out all the pieces. Explain them as I go to assemble them. All right, last one getting a little stuck there. Okay, so let's start with these pieces. These, this is the fire grate which will go in last in the stove. Quite a big wide open fire grate. I'll have comments on that eventually. And the pot stands, excellent pot stands in fact. Quite a heavy gauge, but as you can see, skeletonized and wide. So they'll give it quite a lot of support and they can be inserted upside down, right side up, either way, of course. Okay, four plates, two sides, and a front and a back. So these are the sides. And I'm going to point this out again because uh, when we, when we uh, assemble the stove, because it's important to recognize which are the sides, not that it will be hard once it's assembled, because each of them have a hole right at the top. And that hole is going to become useful to you if you have to move the stove, especially while it's burning. Because these are the sides you're going to lift the stove from to keep it from falling apart, although it's unlikely to fall apart. But if it is, it'll be because you lifted it from either the front or the back. But you can stick in a stick or a piece of metal or whatever you have to lift the stove and move it. So those are the sides. This is obviously the back. So let's assemble it. Now, one thing I want to mention right up front, it's heavy gauge steel, and you can tell that from the weight, which, uh, let's see, the weight of this stove is 1 pound 11 ounces. So this is not a lightweight stove, but look at the gauge of that steel. And I think it's the gauge of that steel that's helped resist in the warping because I've had some really hot fires that will, in this that we'll talk about in a minute. But the thing I wanted to mention, and I'm not sure which one it is now, right here, that slot on one of these panels, again, I can't tell which one it was, when it arrived, the slot was not wide enough to accept the corresponding piece. And I literally had to use my Dremel tool to give it a little, open it up a little bit, and then a fine, very fine little file. Uh, better than too loose, I don't know, but it was a little bit of a nuisance. So that's something to be aware of when it arrives. And you can see there's nothing Fancy about the way this goes together. Put this back, two sides on. Fiddle it a little bit to get the front lined up on those slots. Maybe it was one of these ones. There we go. Okay, so there is the assembled stove. Well, two pieces missing, but, but I'll show those in a second. And like I mentioned, if you're going to have to move this, if you have to move it, you shouldn't have to, of course, but if you have to move it, move it from the sides like this. Now I'm going to do this backwards so you can see what I'm doing. The fire grate slides in. You start by putting it in at an angle, and then you're going to flatten it once you get inside. Let me see if I can bring this back a little bit so you can see it. On each side of the fire grate are small notches right where my finger is, both sides, and a tab at the back. There's a slot in the back plate to accept that tab, and each of those notches help hold it in place because they'll line up with the opening sides of the feed port. So doing this from reverse, And down we go. Okay. Now, it's securely in place. It's not going to fall out. And there's your feed ramp and your fire grate all integrated into the stove. But here's one big downfall to the stove already, at least in my mind. It's maybe not a downfall so much. It is something to be aware of. There's no ash pan. That's why I mentioned you have to have this on a fire safe surface because hot coals will fall through those large openings. And while they do a good job of, of airflow, they do 
allow for hot coals to fall through. So do have this on a fire safe surface of some type. And finally, pot stand as you can see on top. So it's quite a wide stove at the base, providing for a lot of stability, which when something this tall, you want that reassurance that it is going to be stable. So you'll have to find yourself relatively flat surface to put it on, but the legs are wide enough to well support the stove. All right, let's set it up in the fireplace. We'll get a fire going in it. And, uh, oh yes, I did say I'd mention some more statistics. Right, okay, so like I mentioned, one pound, 11 ounces. Not a lightweight stove by any means, but that could be a benefit in this style of stove. We'll talk more about that. The height is eight and one eighths inches. That's from the bottom right up to the top. The width is three and five eighths side to side. I'm not including the, the flares on either side. I'm including just the burn chamber. And the burn chamber from the top down to the fire grate is seven inches. And I'll put the metric uh, equivalents in the show notes as well. Okay, now let's set this up in the fireplace. We'll get a fire going in it. I'm going to get some water on because I have a meal that I want to cook for myself, which will be another video in itself. If you're interested, I'll link that at the end of this video. All right, let's get started. Okay, uh, anybody who works uh, in the outdoors making videos, especially uh, YouTube videos, knows exactly how much of a challenge it can be to work within the environment to get make sure that you, uh, your picture or your video can be seen and hear, heard clearly. Uh, I'm in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the wilderness area, and as you can probably see, there's light and shadow because, of course, the sun is shining down through the trees, and it's breezy around me. So I'm trying to balance the direction of the breeze with the direction of the sun to make sure that uh, it all comes out clearly so if it's not I do apologize and uh, well, I'll do my best okay so the stove is set up in a fireplace that I use quite often for testing these stoves it provides a little bit of a wind break for the stove which all stoves will benefit from but more importantly it has a safe surface underneath the stove because as I showed you a minute ago that fire grate while it allows for a great amount of airflow also means that coals are going to fall through. And I think Tom's stove is exactly the same in terms of design. It may look a little different, but functionally it is the same. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the stove light lit and some water onto boil, as I mentioned. But uh, I just want to talk about how I would go about using a rocket stove like this one and what I have done for testing. So the way that Tom shows it being used is he puts a smallest amount of small thin twigs in through the feed port, covering over the fire grate. And then he lights a little fire starter. He does sell those as well. A little fire starter that he feeds in through the bottom of the stove underneath the fire plate so that the flames will come up and catch the wood on top of the fire grate. That's in fact what I am going to do today is exactly that because I want to do it exactly the way that Tom does it in his videos. Alternatively, you could do a couple of things. One thing that I like to do with rocket stoves is what to start the stove off with a top down feed. Now, you can do that two ways. You can either start the fire in the bottom, like a traditional method, like I'm going to do today, but feed in a number of longer sticks in through the top of the chimney and let them burn up through. And that does make for a very bright, very fast fire. Or you could stack the wood in it, in it vertically and start for a top down burn both work. Neither of those are, however, making use of the chimney effect as much as a true rocket stove will work. But look at the size of that burn chamber. I can get some long sticks in there. With a top-down burn, I can get an extended amount of fire and heat without doing a whole lot of labor once they get it going. So what I've done in the past, and what I'm probably going to do as well today, depending on just how much heat I'm able to generate using it the traditional way, is if I'm looking for a quicker boil or a faster fire, a hotter fire, is even though I have sticks being fed in through the feed port, I'll drop some down through the top and they will catch and they will burn uh, very fast and you'll have a lot of flame. So if you're looking for the quick boil, that may be the way to do it. However, for most cook cooking purposes, if you're not looking for a super intense heat, then feeding the sticks in through the port is the correct way to do it. And the reason is, is only the wood that is laying across the fire grate comes in con will be lit and, and consumed. You won't have all your sticks being consumed at once. It does require you to constantly feed sticks in to make sure that they're in on the surface where the fire is, but at least you have more control over how much heat you have that way. Okay, I said I would get this thing going the way that Tom does, so that's what I'll do. So I have one of the Protec 
uh, Pro Camp, Pro Tech, whatever it is, fire starters, the little ones, fire plugs, I guess they're called. Now, Tom would reach in under and push it through one of the holes, and his, this is where he has an RK there for Rocket King. Uh, I'm just going to light it, lay it down, and then put this little back on top of it. And I have a little stack of sticks right here. As you can see, that I am going to put in. They are a mixture of just some pine twigs and some uh, likely maple, I think it was, that was dead and standing here. So I'm gonna start it all right here. That stuff starts up amazingly well. So it's centered. Is this the way I would do it myself if, uh, if I wasn't doing it for a video? Likely not, I, I would probably start it down through the chimney, but uh, there's nothing wrong with doing this. All right, I, that may take a minute for the flames to catch the wood, or at least to heat them up to the point of combustion. And as it does, I'll start readying a little bit more of my wood. Uh, as with all small wood stoves, it's worth your time to do all the fire prep ahead. Actually, I suppose that's true of all fires, so that you're not rushing around looking for the wood or prepping it while your fire is getting going. Having said that, I'm, I'm sitting here breaking up some sticks. All right, starting to catch on a little bit. The sticks I'm breaking up are a little bit bigger than the ones I started out with so that I can increase size as I go. And I have an assortment here. All right, good start. So you can see already, even though there's not a lot of wood in the fire chamber, there is a lot of flame coming up that chimney. And that's one of the benefits of having a tall burn chamber like this one, is that the chimney effect, the air being drawn in and up, and uh, relatively smoke-free. I mean, it's not completely smoke-free, but it's relatively smoke-free. Some of the reason for smoke, of course, is because there's a lot of pine in here, and that tends to be resiny. I'm listening for one of the other characteristics of a rocket stove which is the drawing of air at high velocity, and it actually makes a noise that people report sounds like a rocket engine. Do you know, I, I, I think I could, I think it is. And now, of course, you're going to hear the, the wood burning anyway, but uh, yeah, there is a bit of a draw. Now, it's not as pronounced in this stove as I've seen it in other rocket stoves where you can actually hear the roar quite clearly and distinctly, but the roar is there. All right, the stove is going well. Where did I? Got to reach across the camera for my pot of water. Now, here's something I want to point out. I think is a, a really good part of the design is the pot stand. As I mentioned, they're wide and that which should provide for stability. They're skeletonized, so they shouldn't act as too much of a heat sink. Not that that makes much of a difference once the fire gets going, but it does lighten the weight a little bit. Um, there's also a fair amount of height above the stove. So the combination of the pot stand and the V-notches, uh, or crenellations, it does look a little bit like a tower on a castle, uh, they provide great exhaust port room. I'm not sure there's nothing on the bottom of my pot here. So I see very little or any dampening effect once I get the stove on, or a pot on top of the stove, as you can see. Um, because of this type of a feed in through the port, you are going to be busy. You're going to be maintaining the fire. But it's easier than some stoves. There's a lot of flame in there. It's licking the bottom of the pot without creating a whole lot of smoke. Well, that's about all you can ask for. Now, you probably, it should be obvious to you that this is pretty much a one-trick pony in the terms of wood. Charcoal, maybe. Wood pellets, definitely not. But it's, you won't be able to use an alcohol stove, no way that I can figure, with this. It's intended for wood. And what it does that, well, I, I would say very well. Um, one of the things I'll mention, just before we finish this, this part of the video, is I had this stove stacked with hardwood. Uh, probably, well, it's a seven inch burn chamber, probably six inch pieces, completely filled and did a top down burn. When you do that, that is the least labor intensive way of, of having a fire because you can, well, no, you never walk away from a fire, but you don't have to constantly feed it. 
One of the downsides of, a sta of using a fire like that is it gets hot, extremely hot. And uh, if the stove is going to warp, that's when you'll, you'll get warping. It's from that type of a fire. And yes, there is a tiny bit of warping on the side plates. I probably should have showed it to you when I first assembled the stove. I'll definitely show it to you before the end of the video. But I've had a dozen fires in this, and that is the limit of the warping. And again, it's not the end of the world if you get a little bit of warping in a plate like this. It no way changes the function of the stove, and it is malleable enough that you can bend it back into shape if it really starts to uh, go out of true. But that hasn't been the case, just a minor bit of warping. Okay, so what I'm doing here, by the way, in case you're interested, is this water that I'm bringing to a boil, I'm going to be cooking my lunch with it, and this is a Happy Yak Express meal, the seven flavor consomme, and I'll be doing a separate review on this meal in case you're interested, but uh, all right, we'll just run through this. Uh, watch, well, I'll let the f fire go through, and I'll cook my lunch, and then we'll come back and we'll close up with a few thoughts. Okay, well, I thought what I would do is, while I'm uh, cooking my meal here, uh, I have my pot of water on. You can see I fed some larger splits of maple that I cut here, and I wasn't completely satisfied how dry they were. However, they're working fine inside, so I've progressed from the small sticks to the larger sticks. It takes a little longer to burn, a little slower, nice and hot though. But what I thought I would do is give you an idea of what happens when you drop a few sticks in down through the top, and these are dead, dry pine twigs off of a tree right here and see how quickly you get a nice flare-up. So if you're looking to, you know, ex expedite a boil, which in fact I am on top of my meal, um, then this is one way of doing it. So you can see there's not a lot, put my pot aside here, not a lot of flame coming out of there, enough heat, plenty to cook with, but if you really want to get things going fast, drop a few sticks down like this, make sure they're below the top of the pot stand, of course. And that should be enough. Give it a second for them to light, and you'll get a rapid amount of heat coming up through the top of that uh, stove, enough to bring the water to boil much, much quicker. I think I'll put my pot back on, and as they do ignite, then I'll give you an idea. Actually, I think it's starting to ignite already. And I see you can get that much extra flame from dropping a few fixed sticks down inside. Yeah. Again, nice and stable. Yeah, a lot of flame coming up now. So all I have in the bottom is just three little pieces of maple, which are slowly being consumed. And now I can hear that rocket stove effect. Man, Let's see if I can get in close enough for you to hear the draw. It is. Now look, watch. There's where you get your rapid boil. So it's not, it's not the way I'd use the stove on a regular basis, but for expediting a boil, that works well. Okay, now I'll finish off making my lunch and we'll come back. Do you know, I had time to eat my lunch, clean my dishes uh, before the stove actually cooled down. So yeah, that's one of the things. One pound, 10 ounces of stainless steel. It's, uh, it's going to absorb a lot of heat and it's going to hold it for a good period of time. Now that's both uh, a pro and a con, I guess. The pro is, is that when your fire starts to die down a little bit and uh, it's going to coals, having that heat still inside of the burn chamber itself would make it easier to feed in some dry wood and get the fire reinvigorated again. Downside, of course, is it takes a long time to cool off. So if you're looking to get on the move quickly, then you'll have to anticipate that in terms of how much time you're going to need for this to cool down. Like all stoves, don't pour water on this. There's only one stove I know of that the maker claims that you can pour water on, and that is the pack stove from Simple Theory Gear. But uh, I, I hesitate to do that regardless. So, okay, so it is cooled off, and there's a few things I want to show you and mention about this stove. I mentioned I've had some hot hot fires in this stove. And you may be able to see that from some of the discoloration on the sides. That's where the hottest spot seems to be. And that's on all the sides, in fact. When, uh, when the fire is going, that seems to be the sweet spot or the hot spot. And it does get very hot. Well, with that much heat, you would expect some warping. And there is a tiny bit of warping. But <laughs> a dozen fires. Now, 
What's it going to be over years? I don't know, but then again, I did say you could push it back together. Can you see the edge? Right here. Would you consider that warping? Well, it is, because it was a little tighter when I first got the stove, but that's it. That's, the, that's how much warping there is. I had kind of expected with this long side unsupported, no notches there to hold it in the, in the halfway up, that there would be more warping, but it just wasn't. It's not there. I, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the heat is moving up the chimney and it's not staying against the metal, except for that one spot, which is an interesting thing in itself. Okay, my final thoughts on this stove. It works really well with wood. I mean, this is, yes, I'm going to say it is a rocket stove. I could hear the air being drawn into the stove as the fire went up the chimney. And uh, yeah, it worked really well. It is a very controllable fire, much more than you would think so. As I mentioned, if you want to maintain a small fire for simmering, just put a few sticks in on top of the burn plate and you'll have just the right amount of heat going up. If you want a really fast fire, then drop some sticks down inside the chimney. It'll catch and you'll get a huge torch of a flame coming out of the top and that'll give you the quick boil you may be looking for. So it is very flexible in that matter. However, it's a single fuel stove. You're not going to use charcoal, you're not going to use wood pellets, and you won't be using alcohol in this stove. At least I can't figure out any reasonable way of doing this without modifying it extensively. Those are the things I like about it. What do I not like? The weight. But as I mentioned a minute ago, the weight is relative. It's relative because uh, that weight acts, that all that stainless steel is actually a benefit for the way this stove operates but you know one pound ten ounces there are other stoves that are lighter but uh, yeah okay this still works extremely well I think Tom that you have an excellent design I had wished I had found yours before I found this one so I could have tested one of yours I wish also they were more affordable in Canada than they are but uh, if you want to see more about this stove, I'm going to provide the links, as I mentioned, to Tom's channel, his website, get as much information about where you can purchase Tom's Rocket King version of this. But I think it's fair that I also put in the AliExpress link that you can see where you can purchase this from China as well. Okay, if you have any questions, if you have any comments about this stove, please put them in the comments section below. But until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.